Hi, I'm going to be working out of this book right here, Finite Element Method, and we're going to be finding displacements and forces. So the first thing we need to do is count our elements. So this represents element 1, this represents element 2, and this represents element 3 here. Okay, now, now I know I have a 3 element system here. Next thing I want to do is count my equations. I have a force 1, force 2, force 3, and a force 4. Okay, so that means I have four of these guys here. So what does that mean? That means I have a 4 by 4 matrix. So before I even work out the problem here, I know that this is going to be a 4 by 4 matrix. Okay, so I know the size of this guy. Next. Next, we have to take our local element matrix, we have to add it up, right here, and then come up with our global element matrix. Okay, so we're going to go from our local element matrix to our global element matrix. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's start at force 1, that's represented right here, we can go like this. So this right here would be our first value in our matrix. Okay, so now let's move on to force 2. That's represented here and here. So this would be our next value right here. Now let's move on to this force 2. You can see that these two are added up here. Now let's move on to force 3 here. That's represented here. And force 3 is represented with this guy and this guy. Now let's move on to this force 3. Now, let's move on to force 4, which is right here. Okay, so we're done with that. Now, let's, let's move on. Next is boundary conditions. So if you notice, 1 here is fixed to a wall, so it's 0, because it's a fixed end. 4 here is also fixed to a wall. It's 0 because it's a fixed end. Okay, so we are done with our boundary conditions. Now, we left off here, right? So, one thing I want to point out is whenever you work with this force 1, right, you would do it like this, right? Right? So, you can see the first step was here, right? And it's the same for force 2. The first step is here. So this zero is distributed to this entire column. So let's go ahead and multiply that out. So that's what I did here. So this is right here, right? And I did the same thing with this zero. I went ahead and zeroed that out. Okay, and the same is true for, for this guy, right? This is associated with this column. And this is associated with this column. Okay, so now we need to take our unknowns and we need to move them to the right side of the equation. So how do we do that? Well, we, know F, we don't know F1, we don't know F2, and we don't know F4. So those need to come to the other side of the equation. Let's start with F1, let's move it here. So that's what I do here. Okay, so if you notice I have a negative here, and I'll show you why. If I look at this equation, I would go F1 is equal to all this other stuff, right? Right? So all I did was I brought the force to the other side of the equation, and that's why there's a negative here. So next thing you need to realize is 
We don't want a negative on our answer, so we're gonna have to get rid of these guys. Okay? So, next is Force 4. We go and move this over. And that's what I did here, right? So, nothing big there. Okay, let's take these negatives and let's distribute them out. So, if you notice, this is associated with this guy. So, all I did was move the negative. And I did the same thing here, right? This is associated with this column. This is associated with this column. Okay, so nothing big there. Okay, so now, if you notice, I have another unknown. I need to take this and move it to this side. So, whenever I take this guy and I move him, I need to create a new column, right? So, this is associated with him, right? So, I have my negative, right? So, I go ahead and distribute my negative out, right? Okay, so now I have move force 2 over, right? And don't forget to put your 0 in over there. So, now we have all our unknowns on the right-hand side, and we have all our knowns on the left here. So, that's exactly what we wanted. Okay, so what's next? We left off on this guy. So we have all of our unknowns on this side. We have all our known values on this side. Okay, so what is F3? F3 is this guy, right? We know this value. Okay, K1 represents this guy. We know that guy, right? K2 is this, right? We know him. K3 is him. So we know that value. Okay, so we know everything on the left-hand side here. And these are all our unknowns. So what I want to do is work this out for you guys. I'm going to get my system of equations. So let's start with force 1, which is represented here. So here's how we would do it. Okay, so that's force 1, so we're done with this guy. If you condense it, you get this. Let's move on to force 2, which is represented right here. So that gives us this. Let's move on to force 3. Force 3 is represented here. Okay, so we get this guy, right? And of course, this F3, go ahead and move him to this side. Okay, so let's do force 4. Right? It represents this. So, how do we do that? Okay, so now we have our system of equations here. 